This week our focus is active reading. How do we really draw students in to what we want them to read as we're giving support for their the way that they manipulate the text? Uh, a couple of authors uh, in Reading and Learning Literacy Support for the 21st Century Learning by Lewis and Kimberly Gomez, they write that the new century, that the workforce that we're putting students out into, and truly their citizenship depend on being able to critically analyze and synthesize information. Now, we're probably more comfortable with asking students to do those kinds of things in interpretive types of readings. In the English 200 classes, it's probably quite comfortable and natural and uh, speedy for you to be able to go to the types of, of manipulation of print that you want students to do. Now, your big challenge is true engagement and true appreciation by the student of the writing, the use of language, the author's purpose, all of those kinds of things that make literary elements uh, so important to what students need to think about as, as they're reading. So yours is more of a sales pitch regarding that type of print. English 100 with information text for many years, it was assumed that everybody just knew from fourth grade on that information was information and what you did was learn it. That's not so much a, 25th, a 21st century skill as it was at one time. Now it's, is it correct? Is it legitimate? Are your students questioning what they read? Our information sources that we have available to us on just about any topic that you can name have both information out there that we can trust and information that we can't trust. And learning to be highly selective about the information that we believe is part of the challenge uh, for the new literacy levels that we're expecting from our students. Um, one thing that, um, that I'd like to mention to you uh, with both types of readings are metacognitive journals. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more at another time about reading guides. But one way to not overwhelm you at the very beginning of the semester with having to produce long and sophisticated reading guides for what you're asking students to do is to have them to do something we call a metacognitive journal. And in that journal, they're going to do some things that we know all good readers need to do, but that your students don't do routinely and don't think about as they're reading. An example would be introducing the upcoming reading in either 100 or 200 and asking students to make a prediction about some aspect of that reading. And that would go in the metacognitive journal. We know that the way the brain is going to receive information depends on whether or not we've established a place for it. Last week we talked about building background knowledge. This goes one step past that. That was a lot on you. Students learning to make predictions about what's going to happen is much more on them. So you might consider metacognitive journals. It doesn't even have to be that formal. You could use those as a ticket out, whereby students make their predictions about what they think is going to happen. That gives you a chance to look at their predictions and gauge how on track they are with where this author is going or where this information piece is going. So that's one idea, and I'll talk to you more about different types of metacognitive processing that students can do. But to ease into this, the first thing you want them to be able to do is after you've laid out the foundation and talked to them about this particular type of, of reading you're about to do and a, activated some schema, built some background, have them make a prediction about where they think it's going to go. What would that include? You can do that blind, just with the prompt you give them, 
or you can do that in combination with having them look through the chapter, look through the particular reading, and make predictions on what they can find. If you do the second, you need to put a time frame on it. Uh, and it can be done in or out uh, of class. Probably more effective and more powerful done inside of class. We'll talk later about some other ideas uh, for those. Another active reading strategy that you can put forth is to use some type of graphic organizer that's already put together. And you don't have to copy those for students. You can send them an email with the, the link to a URL. They can print it themselves. Or you can put save the file as a PDF and put it in Blackboard, however you might want to handle that. You'll find lots of links to different types of graphic organizers at the bottom of the English page that I put together for you. So you might work your way into having reading guides that are very supportive of students that way. By doing that, you might even find ones that allow students to pull vocabulary for themselves. Uh, we, we want, at some point, direct instruction on vocabulary. But again, uh, we're sort of building this uh, ship as we're sailing it. So you're already in the process trying to stop now with all of the, the courses that you have and the, the other responsibilities you have and start putting together reading guides that include vocabulary and how you're going to work that vocabulary and so forth may not be tremendously um, popular, I, I, a tremendously popular idea with you right now. I'll leave you with one other thought for active reading. If you want your students to process the print the way someone in your discipline processes that print, you need to model that for them. Find a shorter read by the same author. Find a shorter read on the same topic. And give the students a handout of it. Put it in Blackboard, have them print it, whatever it might be. And then take a few minutes in class and actually read through that with the students, sort of talking your way through what was I thinking, uh, what, what might I respond to. Here are some examples of that. Are there times that you might want to stop and refer to the author's style, the mastery of the craft? Are there times that you want to stop and just add your own comments? Wow, or what a great idea. I can't believe I haven't thought of it. Are there times that you want to question the author? Really? Is that where this person's going? Evaluate the content. Wow, that doesn't, that doesn't align with what I thought I knew. It doesn't align with what I've heard. Or it's exactly in line with what I've heard. Linking information to your own life, to your work, to your discipline, to, to current events. Arguing with the author. I'm going to make a couple of notes here. I just don't think that's right. And making decisions. Talking through how you do each of those elements is a model for your students on how they should approach the upcoming print. Think alouds have been around for a long time. They're the best modeling we know for one type of literacy to be shared with another person so that that person can mimic that and actually improve their own thinking and their own active reading. Thanks and good luck this week.